So are you in the market to purchase hearing aids? That is a question. And how do you do that, you know? And um, buying hearing aids sometimes is like buying a car. <laughs> so we'll talk about hearing aids and we'll talk about cochlear implants. Hello everyone, this is Lisa and you are in Hearing Loss Pathfinder where we have all kinds of information, resources, support and you know information for you. So stick around. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about uh, purchasing hearing, uh, hearing aids and uh, that can be a little overwhelming sometimes when it's the first time. Uh, you have to take a look at your insurance uh, to see if it covers Sometimes it only co or only covers the test, uh, the hearing loss test, and sometimes it'll cover the um, both the hearing aids and the hearing test. So it really depends, and you have to be sure about your insurance and what it covers. Sometimes the office can tell you, you know, what it covers once they know what insurance you have and they'll guide you through. But however, let's get to the part where the audiologist informs you, yes, you have hearing loss, and yes, this is uh, a prudent time for you to start wearing hearing aids, then these are the next questions you need to ask. You know, be clear about the cost and what is covered by insurance and what is not covered by insurance. Um, <coughs> The trial period, what is the trial period? Now in the state of Wisconsin, it's 30 days. Uh, it might be different in your state <coughs> or in your country. So um, you, you have to check what is the trial period so you can test it and see, um, <coughs> and see how many days uh, you can uh, test the hearing aids. Um, always, always, always make sure that the hearing aid has a T-coil. And um, the newer technology that's coming up is Bluetooth. So I have a fly here, <laughs> so excuse me, <laughs> my waving hands. <laughs> um, <coughs> the T-coil is a tiny copper wire inside your hearing aid. It's very tiny, but it's really important technology because it can connect with hearing loops that are installed in gymnasiums and theaters and movie theaters in churches. So it's, it's really highly used. So I wouldn't skip that part. Uh, some audiologists, um, you know, poo poo it, but it's really important to have that T coil. <laughs> I'm letting you know now. So <coughs> just have the T coil, you know, if you run into, uh, a presentation or even in museums they have uh, hearing loops where you can stand in that circle and hear the presenter or what's going on in in that museum so <coughs> it'll be really helpful bluetooth is the up-and-coming um, technology uh, today so your hearing aid most most likely will have bluetooth already installed so you want to ask about Bluetooth, what is it, and how does it work out in the real world? So <coughs> follow-ups. If you get hearing aids, will you have follow-ups, and how often? So you want to ask about you know, these follow-ups. And initially, it's going to be a little often just to see how you're doing and to make sure that in, the, in that period of 30 days that you're doing OK. Um, Will counseling be part of all this, which it usually is. And the counseling is just, you know, <coughs> in terms of using a hearing aid, how to hear your best, what kind of things that you can do to hear your best. So um, counseling will uh, probably be part of uh, getting the hearing aids. If the hearing aid doesn't work out for you, you don't like it, um, it's just not fitting your needs, you know, what is the return policy? And you can ask that right off the bat. What is the return policy if I don't, if it does just doesn't, I don't like them, <laughs> period. <laughs> I don't like the color. I don't like the size. I don't like, you know, whatever it is, just let them know. So what is the return policy? You know, how do you do this? And especially when the insurance is involved. 
um, there'll be a sales contract with all this. So you, you want to see that. There's going to be a lot of paperwork, you know, when you purchase a hearing aid. And part of that's going to be the sale contract. And that will, uh, in the sales contract, there'll be a description of the hearing aid, the type of hearing aid uh, or hearing aids. Uh, and so that's really important to have. And it will have, you know, certain rules and regulations in the contract. So you want to keep that close by as you're in the trial period. And afterwards, you know, you want to pull that out and say, oh, yeah, these are the hearing aids I purchased 10 years ago. <laughs> so, um, so the contract, even though it looks like a lot of paperwork, um, it's really important in this phase. So, you know, buying a hearing aid, they are a little expensive. But if you can't hear and you can't communicate and your life is getting miserable, this might be the time to get some assistance. Um, and, you know, don't worry about what others are going to think. You know, this is, this is about you. This is about you and your needs to be able to communicate, to be able to hear, to be able to function, and not be stressed out when you're with family or friends or um, with your spouse. You know, you want to be able to relax and be able to hear, <laughs> period. So <coughs> there'll be all kinds of tools that you can use with the hearing aids um, so that you can hear the TV better. Uh, the tools right now are a little expensive. You know, when you're looking at, um, you know, uh, TV ears or things like that, they'll be a little expensive, but it might be a little cheaper to just add a loop, a uh, hearing loop, you know, so you can hear the TV comfortably. There are other apparatuses that you can add, you know, so and that'll transmit directly to your hearing aids, and that way you won't have to turn up the TV as loud as you've been <laughs> and blasting your husband out of the room, <laughs> so <laughs> or your partner, or your friend. <laughs> so um, there's all kinds of things that will benefit, you know, you getting hearing aids. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of issues, you know, and and it'll be very strange in the beginning. You know, you'll hear the refrigerator that you haven't heard in a bazillion years. You'll hear the washer and dryer alarm that you haven't hear, heard in a long time. So it'll be fun for you to rediscover these sounds and some sounds you probably don't want to hear. <laughs> but... <laughs> um, but, you know, the main thing is communicating back and forth with ease so you're not straining. People are not yelling at you <laughs> and complaining about your hearing loss. <laughs> and you're complaining about everybody mumbling. So the hearing aids will, will reduce or eliminate all of that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's hearing aids for you. The other part I wanted to talk about, which I have in other videos, <coughs> But I wanted to add it here since they also are hearing apparatuses, and that is cochlear implants. If you are at a stage in which you uh, hearing aids are no longer helping you, and you are you know in that dire strait in which you're struggling with the hearing aids, and the audiologist is doing their best with your hearing aids, but you know you're at that point where it's it's just you're at that end uh, piece of having the hearing aids work for you, then it might be time for cochlear implants. So what will happen then? Uh, the audiologist will have to refer you to a specialized clinic or to a hospital. Uh, in my case, I was referred to a hospital. <coughs> there they will um, start with a pair of hearing aids that will address to the best of their ability your hearing loss, your type of hearing loss. And um, they will observe you, just th they will program them to the best of their ability and they will observe you and have a few appointments and see how you do with those hearing aids that are um, louder and stronger and well programmed to see 
if that type of hearing aid would, would help you better and, and keep you out of that range of needing a cochlear implant because cochlear implants require surgery and so you, you want to delay that <laughs> as much as possible if you choose to, to look at that route. As the clinic or the hospital observes you, you know, fail with the hearing aids and, and struggle with the hearing aids, then they will recommend you for cochlear implants. Now, you might say, goodness, is this like hearing aids that, you know, I have to look at all these brands, blah, 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 and these styles? And, and no, <coughs> there's only three types of cochlear implants here in the United States. In Europe, they have their own, you know, types. In Australia, they have their own types. So <coughs> here in the United States, we have three. We have Medell, we have Advanced Bionics, and we have a Cochlear America. And all three do the same thing. They help you hear. So there shouldn't be a competition or a stress. Um, they are designed differently. They look differently. Uh, and that's okay. Um, they have different tools that you can use. So you want to look at those. Uh, the style, the shape of them are a little different one from the other. Uh, but again, they all help you here. And, you know, y the, the, the failure of using a cochlear implant is like 2% or 1% failure rate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm telling you now that you won't lose a whole lot. You know, you, you've lost most of your hearing. There's nothing more to lose. Now, most insurances these days cover cochlear implants, including Medicare. So y you want to go over that carefully with your audiologist, with your, your ENT, with the ENT surgeon, and ask these same questions, you know. Uh, unfortunately, you can't have a trial period <laughs> with cochlear implants. They put them in, and, and, and that's it. Um, but, you know, the ENT surgeon will be responsible for the surgery and after the surgery. So, uh, it requires rehab because your your brain and your cochlear implant need to connect <laughs> at some point. So it, it will be a process of uh, rehabilitation and you getting used to the cochlear implant. Uh, and, and eventually you will hear almost like you never lost anything. <laughs> so... I am a cochlear implant re recipient myself. I have two cochlear implants, and I've done I've done very well, no issues. Um, and I I don't know anyone in my circles who has failed, other than perhaps someone who was born deaf and didn't use hearing aids and then all of a sudden decided for a cochlear implant, their failure rate is a little bit higher because it just depends on uh, the brain and, and their situation, why they were born deaf. You know, there's all kinds of issues and, and concerns when a person is completely deaf. So, but if you lost your hearing recently, um, then, you know, the brain is, is still waiting for that information. In a person who was born deaf, the brain doesn't have that information at all. So when they receive sound, they have to develop those files in their brain to begin to understand sound. I don't know if this makes sense, but, you know, it's like a blind person. A person who was born blind, they do surgery and, you know, some special apparatus, and all of a sudden they see. They see colors, they see depth, they see movement, and that's very overwhelming, so they have to go through rehab. So same thing with cochlear implants. If you've lost your hearing recently, then no biggie. Your, your brain will connect 
It'll say, uh oh, I'm hearing with something different. What is this? And gradually it'll interact with the cochlear implant, the internal portion, and the external portion, and you'll start to hear like you did, similar that you did before. Now I can't say the same. <coughs> Some sounds will take longer to, to really adjust to. <coughs> it took me about five months to really pick up speech. Um, <coughs> that is much longer than the usual. It usually takes people about a month, maybe two. But my audiologist said, not a problem. This is not a race. It's just what your brain needs to do. We just need to wait and continue to do rehab. So um, same thing for you that, you know, I encourage everyone who has uh, received a cochlear implant to expose themselves to sound, to noise, to conversation, to any opportunity to receive sound and to relearn relearn how birds sound, relearn how your partner's voice sounds, relearn how your annoying cousin's voice sounds. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, so it's just a rehab. It's like, you know, getting a new leg or getting a new arm. It's, it's that, that profound. So um, if you're afraid of getting cochlear implant because of the surgery, it's, it's day surgery, it's outpatient. Um, the protocols now for the surgery and <coughs> for controlling pain, initial pain, <coughs> for controlling initial pain will is much better than it was when I got my cochlear implants, which was years ago. So now it's it's much better, and surgery techniques are much better. So it's improved, you know, a ton. <laughs> so you who are looking at cochlear implants for the first time, um, it's it's more of a breeze. So of course the NT has to check your health and make sure that your health is good to be able to go through a surgery and uh, be able to receive a cochlear implant and what type, you know, so that conversation will happen between you and your ENT because they have to do an MRI, they have to do a CT, and I think an X-ray. So they want, the ENT wants to see the whole composition of your ears, sinuses, to make sure that you are capable of receiving, physically capable of receiving a cochlear implant. So... But any questions about the cochlear implant? Again, most insurance companies here in the United States cover cochlear implants. They understand cochlear implants and what they're for. So you just ask any questions. Um, you know, be clear about insurance, how much the insurance will cover, how much you will end up paying, uh, all of that. So that's important. Have you met your deductible? all those things. So, um, of course, cochlear implants come with T-coils, all of them, uh, and there, there is uh, Bluetooth technology already installed in the cochlear implant. Follow-ups will be very um, recent, like, you know, you'll have every week, then every two weeks, and every three weeks, and once a month. And so it's part of the rehab to see how you're doing, how you're progressing. Um, there'll be a ton of counseling. <laughs> so <laughs> because the audiologist wants to know how you're feeling with it and how you're hearing, what are your frustrations, uh, what could improve, how you have been improving these last few weeks, last few months. So um, there'll be a ton of counseling there. Uh, return policy, I doubt it. <laughs> so <laughs> once it's in, it's in. You know, sometimes in the deaf community, they somebody will go for a cochlear implant, and then they decide, no, this is I don't want this. So um, th the surgeon will say, okay, well, all you have to do is not use the processor. Uh, I'm not going to do another surgery and take it out. You know, it's not going to bother you in any way. So um, it'll just stay there. So, 
yeah, it's a little bit more difficult for the for the people in the deaf community to make a decision for a cochlear implant. You know, some of them think that they're going to lose their skills in in sign language, and that's not true at all. Um, it is not brain surgery. It has nothing to do with the brain. The cochlear implant itself is placed over the skull, so they don't touch the brain in itself at all. So if they say, oh, they're going to make a hole in your brain, not true. <laughs> so they're just going to place it under the skin, and it, it just uh, sits on the skull. And there's a little wire that goes through the ear so that your brain can you know, start processing and sending messages through that little wire to, to the back. You know, the, the end of the wire will be placed next to the hearing nerve that goes to the brain. Um, that final part goes to the brain, but not on top of it, just next to it. So that nerve, if it's still functioning, then, you know, the brain will say, hmm, there's something new here, what's going on? So then it just has to go in that loop to get used to it and receiving sound. And again, a person who's never heard has to develop those files of voices, birds, dishwasher, a clock, you know, so they don't have those files. They don't have understanding of sound. So they have to go through a lot of rehab for a longer time than you and I would. So that's all I have to say about that. Don't want this to be too long. Any further questions about hearing aids or cochlear implants, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll be happy to fill that in. All right. Take care, everyone, and see you in the next video.